Some people can say, well, you know, my husband don't love me because he married again. Or, you know, I feel that he doesn't. So what? no matter what he says, it doesn't matter to me because he didn't do it in a way that I wanted him to do it. Or I didn't want him to do it at all. So he couldn't possibly feel the way that I thought he felt. Or maybe I feel more deeply for him because he didn't do it this way. We are different. And definitely men are different, different than women. Peace is your coach, Coach Nyla, one of the co-founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as co-author of the book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. And in this video, I'm going to hit on a topic that can be a little controversial to people, um, and it's about personal feelings. You know, are, you know, are one's personal feelings more important than someone else's? And I will talk about that, how it plays a part in polygyny and how it can also play a part in where it can cause some destruction, it can cause some mistrust, it can cause some manipulation, all these different things when we're only looking at our own feelings, not looking at the bigger picture. Um, you probably heard it. If you are not new to our channel or if you've seen a number of videos that we talk about big picture thinking, you will understand what I mean by that. Where it's not just this one-sided or it's not just this, this um, small lens, me, me, me is about me um, type of thinking. And this is one of the topics that have come up and we've been asked to talk about because a lot of the comments do come from um, wives, first wives, initial wives, that say, well, you know, um, it didn't seem like my feelings were thought about or, you know, what about my feelings? Or I don't feel that he should have done this or I feel that he should have done it in a different way. I felt that he should have not married again. I felt that he should have married in a different time or a different place or whatever the case may be. And when a person brings up, hey, well, did you look at the bigger picture? You know, or is it only is it only by your individual, your particular feelings about what you would have rather him do than what, what the bigger picture looks like? And what I mean by the bigger picture is not just that, oh, it's another addition to the family or it's a legacy building or anything like that, but bigger picture thinking that could this benefit me in some way, shape, or form? And what I mean by benefit is not always, it doesn't always have to be a beneficial thing as far as um, something that's tangible. It can be a beneficial thing as far as that, what is this doing for me as a person? Is it allowing me to be more honest with my feelings, my spouse? Is it allowing me to be more open? Is it allowing me to be um a big picture thinker? Is it allowing me to learn how to deal with conflict um, in a more mature way? Is it allowing me to get closer to a law, you know, or to the higher power for those who are Muslim or anything like that? I feel that emotional maturity is a big, big key in fulfillment in our relationships, regardless of of um, if we are in polygyny or if we're not in polygyny. It's, it's a big, it's a key factor. I'm not saying it's the key, I'm saying it's a key factor. And being emotionally mature doesn't mean just allowing things to happen and say, okay, well, I'm good. I'm just going to just let it go. I'm not going to talk about it or I'm just going to be okay with it. I'm not saying that. 
you know, I'm going to turn the other cheek, look the other way, or no, it's about being able to maturely talk about it, speak your piece. And also realizing that the, the um, emotion or the meaning that you put behind the emotion or the things that happen to you or that happen to us is what causes the feelings that we have, the emotion, the meaning that we put behind it. Some people can say, well, you know, my husband don't love me because he married again. Or, you know, I feel that he doesn't. So what? no matter what he says, it doesn't matter to me because he didn't do it in a way that I wanted him to do it. Or I didn't want him to do it at all. So he couldn't possibly feel the way that I thought he felt. Or maybe I feel more deeply for him because he didn't do it this way. We are different and definitely men are different, different than women. What they associate with things is totally different than how we associate things with, you know, our feelings or what love may mean to one person may not mean the same to the other person. Does that mean that, you know, they're, that they don't love you because they didn't do it the exact way that you wanted them to, to do it or that they behave in the exact same way? that you want them to behave. So we have to look at these different things and say, am I trying to be this massive controller you know, of my entire relationship, my entire uh, marriage or whatever it is? Now we are in control of ourselves, how we behave, what we um, put behind things, what we think about things, we can control that. But do we put ourselves in a position of saying that if you didn't do something the way I wanted you to do it, then you're disrespecting me? Or if you didn't do it in a way that I wanted you to do it, then you don't love me? Are we putting those stipulations on it? And if we are, how does that make the other person feel? See, we say, well, they did this to me and this is how I felt about it. But see, we don't say this is how I felt about it. It's like, they made me feel this way. So if you put something on someone else, have you ever looked at it that they could possibly feel a specific way too? Or does that not matter? I'm just asking for th those to take a deeper look and to kind of get, our, get out of our own egos and get, up, get out of our own self and say, you know what? Maybe there's a bigger picture here. Maybe it's something where it's not about someone out to get me or someone out to hurt me, being out to hurt me or anything like that. And sometimes it's really difficult for people to see that, especially coming from me. I've seen the comments. It's really difficult for me, for people to hear these words coming out of my mouth to say, how about you look at the bigger picture? How about you look inside yourself and say, you know, I'm not the only one with feelings here. Maybe I can be open to communicating. Maybe I can be open, open enough. Maybe I can be open enough to communicate, to understand and also be understood. So in that way, that means that, okay, so it's not just about my feelings. My feelings aren't just the be all end all or the top of the list on everything. But that's where emotional maturity comes in. That's what emotional maturity means. It doesn't mean that you don't get upset. It doesn't mean that you don't get hurt. It doesn't mean any of those things. It means that you can sit back and evaluate your feelings, evaluate the emotion, evaluate the situation and say, you know what? This is how I feel about it. And I'm willing to talk about that. I'm willing to discuss it. Now, we may not come to a, an agreement on it. And you may allow me or you may make me see some things that I didn't see at first. But I'm open to that. Just like I may have you see some things that are bothering me or in a way that you may not have seen it. See, now, whether we agree or not, that's not it. It's that you heard me, I heard you, now you understand me, and I understand you. So I also see that your feelings 
are important as well. Oh, this may not, this may be hard for you. It's hard for me. It's not just about, oh, it's only hard for me. It's only hard for me. It got to be, or my, my pain or suffering or the challenges that I'm dealing with is way worse than the feelings that you are dealing with or the challenges that you're dealing with. We are also the authors of the new ebook, The Polygamy Roadmap. Roadmap. <laughs> Two different roadmaps, one specifically for men and the other for women. For women. <laughs> Naturally. So no matter where somebody is in their journey, whether they're just considering it and what's required, especially um, men I'm talking to, I share the five requisites on really what it takes to build a healthy, successful polygynous family unit. So with that being said, make sure if you're a man and if you're serious, not just curious, you take action and get it today. And in the women's polygamy roadmap, we talk about the different feelings that women might go through with emotions of fear, challenge, betrayal, jealousy. Yes, and we give you some good insight as well as tips, anecdotes, as well as some of our stories um, of struggle in the polygamy roadmap too for women. And you will find out really how to have a type of confidence in yourself after reading this. I'm truly, truly in the mindset that you would anyway. <laughs> Indeed, so do what you gotta do. And that means go to polygamyroadmap.com, grab your copy. We look forward to you benefiting from it and joining us in our private community. With that being said, it's not like them. Peace. Peace.